Hi friends. Welcome back to me and my face. I am doing a what I eat in a day video today and this will be completely plant-based, completely vegan for the most part. I don't really like to advertise or necessarily say that I am completely vegan. I do feel like plant-based is more of a better term for how I eat um, because I do occasionally eat fish. Sometimes I will eat chicken, which is very rare. Um, same with dairy. It's, it's pretty rare, but I don't like to say and restrict myself necessarily. So plant-based is just a better term for how that I personally eat. I also want to put out a disclaimer that I am not a dietitian. I'm not a nutritionist. I am barely a professional at anything at all. So <laughs> take what I'm saying with a, a very small grain of salt, pun intended. I pretty much never eat the same thing every single day. I would get so incredibly bored of that. I think I probably eat the same thing maybe twice a week. Maybe that 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 e that's even a stretch um, because I do like to really change things up and and incorporate a lot of different things and try new foods. So a, a a day in the life of me eating can be completely different every single day of every single week of every single month of the year. So this is just an example of one day of what I ate. Um, I would love to do like a whole series on this because it does change so often that I feel like it could be really interesting. So let me know if that's something you wanna see. I hope you get a lot of good inspiration out of this video and maybe want to incorporate some things into your own diet. So for breakfast, I'm typically not a big coffee drinker. I, for the most part, drink tea all day long, especially in the winter. This morning I'm making a French vanilla decaffeinated black tea and I kind of go back and forth with caffeine. Sometimes I'll drink regular black tea and sometimes I don't. It really just depends on how I'm feeling. I always put a little bit of honey in just to sweeten it up a little bit. I'm using the Califia Farms Coconut Cream and Almond Milk Creamer. I am really upset because Trader Joe's used to have a coconut creamer that literally rocked my world. It was so insanely good. They have discontinued it now, so if Trader Joe's is listening, your girl is really hurting because I can't find anything that's as good as that one. For our breakfast, I'm making something that I've been calling a dessert breakfast because it literally tastes like a dessert. And I'm using the Kalina Plain and Simple Yogurt. On top, I'm just sprinkling two or three brownie crisps from Trader Joe's. These are actually gluten-free as well as vegan. They're also just a really good like snack to have you know, on the go. I'm gonna sprinkle in some cacao nib. I just sprinkle probably not even, probably a teaspoon. And that is my breakfast. These are so, so insanely good. I usually hate the taste of apple cider, but this tastes like, kind of like a really good ginger ale. All right, um, I am going to pick up some Chipotle for Dylan and I. It's like two o'clock, I haven't eaten in a while and that's a problem. So I'll show you what I get or I'll let you know what I get. I get the same thing every time and well, not really, that's a lie. Sometimes I get a bowl, sometimes I get a taco, sometimes I get a burrito, you never really know with me. So I'll show you what I get. Okay, so honestly, I may eat, so, okay, 1975, needs to calm down. Well, I will probably be eating one of, I got, a, I got tacos this time, and I'm probably gonna eat one in the car because I am real hungry, so you might see that, and I apologize for that. There's my tacos, which look like shit right now because I fucked up the foil. But I get a veggie burrito taco bowl. I usually get it with white rice. I get black beans and pinto beans because you should have both. I get fajita veggies, lettuce, corn, and then 
when you get veggie like burrito or taco or bowl they give you the guacamole for free which is huge life hack you're welcome so then i get a side of guacamole with chips and that's gonna be my lunch and i'm gonna eat this right now one taco <gasps> oh no oh no this is a bad idea yeah shake it up <laughs> Want to tell what you got? Let's cry. Let's cry. Boom. Wow. That looks like it's gonna hurt later. <laughs> wow. Perfect mix. All right, so I've been watching Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Yeah, I busted you. No, I wasn't. It's you were 14 intense. Fourteen episodes deep and didn't tell me. I was what? You were 14 episodes deep and never brought it up. I know, I know. So. <laughs> no, we had like, there's a word there. Oh, it's a head? There's a word there, so that's not a word. That's what it was about. Well, she had damage. Royalty or some shit. Like, it's like, I don't know, I don't really understand. They're not coming out. I think that now, she's like 17 hundred square feet. I think she's about 17 hundred square feet. But you said that I was cracking up. I was crying about like 17,000 square feet. What are you doing? Nothing. I found Clemo. Sorry about that. I'm making dinner now and I'm gonna make, um, uh, usually you put all of the ingredients in a pot and you let it cook. So this is a red lentil pasta dish. <laughs> I'm convinced this is the most simple dinner recipe you could ever make. Uh eating okay all right let's figure out where the frig i'm gonna put you all i feel like a lot of people get discouraged by vegan cooking because one most people didn't grow up that way and if you did you have a advantage over most people a lot of people get intimidated because they think that for some reason vegan cooking is super difficult and like I don't know I, I just think that there's a, a little bit of a misconception when it comes to vegan cooking this is the thing about it this is my thing about it I think big part of eating plant-based is trial and error so when I say trial and error I'm saying like you're gonna try a lot of stuff that you absolutely hate you're gonna try a lot of stuff that is not good you are it takes a little bit of legwork to get to a point in, in plant-based cooking that you feel like super, not even satisfied, but just feel like content and happy and feel like you're getting things that, one, that are nutritious, obviously, but two, that are like actually satisfying and, you know, make you feel good. So that's like, I feel like, like my number one rule when it comes to like eating plant-based or someone who's new to plant-based is that you're gonna have to do a little bit of legwork in the beginning so like for instance cheese is a bit hard to find right like as you know plant-based cheese because a lot of plant-based cheeses are i don't even know what the proper word would be for them they're gross that's all i can come up with i guess some vegan cheeses are absolutely disgusting but there are a select few that if you do the light work and you try the shitty ones you'll come across a good one it's like when you the you know, like when you kiss a few frogs one will turn into a prince it's kind of the same with vegan cheese <laughs> you gotta try some vegan cheeses some nasty vegan cheeses to find the prince of vegan cheeses. And and that's the, the, all you gotta know about vegan cooking. But I also feel like it's about having a little bit of creativity and you also kind of have to forget like all of the basic things that you like. When you taste cheese, like vegan cheese, it's not gonna taste like regular cheese because it's not regular cheese. Like. Obviously, it, I mean, I, I think sometimes people forget that 
they're they want to go plant based, but then expect the plant based things to taste exactly like what they were always eating, like meat and dairy. You're if, that they're different things. Like you, you can't expect that to happen. We gotta kind of rearrange our expectations when it comes to that. And also remember that you have to put a little bit of legwork in to find some really, really awesome things. Just try a lot of stuff out. You gotta try a lot of stuff out. There's a little bit of time where you're kind of like, fuck this vegan noise, I just wanna eat a cheeseburger. But you just gotta, you just gotta take the time. I also feel like if you have, like I always have, it's literally right here. I always have in my house onions of any kind or shallots but normally i have both because i'm obsessed with shallots this is a new thing um lemons i always have on hand i always have garlic pretty much we always have avocados too in the house because i feel like those are really good staples especially with vegan cooking it's just really good to have on hand anyway but you kind of open yourself up to a lot of different options if you have these basic things in your house at all times. Um, but it takes a little bit of time to like develop and, and um, what's the word I'm looking for? It takes a little bit of time to develop and get your sense of what your basics are. So for me, they're onions, shallots, lemon, avocado, and garlic but they could be something completely different for you. Like it, it's, it can be completely tailored and personalized to the person that's eating it. But I think those are probably my biggest two tips is that one, you have to do the legwork and it's gonna take a little bit of time and you're gonna kiss some frogs before you find your prints of plant-based things. And two is to always have, or at least try to start to develop what your basics would be and always have them on hand. I chopped up, I chopped up five cloves of garlic because I have a problem and I'm obsessed with it. Like I'm obsessed with garlic. So if you don't like a lot of garlic, I would maybe stick to like maybe four cloves would probably do the trick. Um, I just have, I have a garlic thing. I don't know where, what happened, but I have a love affair with garlic. And then, like I said, I'm going to chop this entire, this entire onion up because it's really not that big. Like it's, I would say it's a small onion. And this is a, a yellow onion. Bring up this whole entire damn onion. Ah! Oh my God. There's definitely a trick on how to not have your eyes cry out of your sockets. When you're cutting onions, I can't remember. My mom taught me it once and I don't remember what the hell it is. I should ask her. are completely seared out of my head ah! oh okay let's I'm giving you all of my tips right now this is like absolute word vomit something I learned I think from the food channel I can't remember whose show it might have been Rachel Ray which is absolutely hilarious but always have like I think they call it like a slop bowl or something like when you're chopping vegetables especially onions because of like the skin and, and garlic too always have a bowl that holds like, your skin and like the butt end of things so when you're chopping you can just kind of like toss it in instead of going to the garbage and, and cleaning off your hands it just makes it so 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 much easier to be efficient in the kitchen okay really quickly full disclaimer I almost never measure things and I'm sorry in advance about that. I don't know why, I just, my mom is the same way. She just doesn't do it either. When I bake, of course, you measure things because there's like literally a scientific reaction that's happening, but I don't measure things. So I'm gonna do my best to try to explain how much things are, but 
I think that's a big part of cooking for me at least is like kind of like the intuitive I don't know like feeling I have when I'm pouring olive oil into a pan I just I'm sorry let's let's try let's get it going here we go okay okay so again this is literally a one pot thing so I have a giant John right there um I'm gonna put my chopped onion and my garlic in first just because if it's sitting a little bit longer with the liquid in it like as i'm pouring everything in it'll soften a little bit i've done this before where i put in the veggie broth and the olive oil with the pasta and the pasta like before i started cooking it i just put it all in the pot and the pasta kind of got a, this weird like mushy texture um so don't do that next i'm putting in an entire can of diced tomatoes you want the whole can in here with the liquid as well i also normally get the one without salt because then i can be in control of how salty this gets um then i'm gonna put in it's I don't know how much it is. I usually just use the entire carton of this and this is uh, 32 ounces. So you just shove all that in there. This also makes, honestly, a lot. This will probably feed easily four people, I think. Um, I'm gonna put in, I don't know. Probably like two tablespoons of olive oil-ish. Probably a little bit more. Um, some oregano leaves. Again, just trying to eyeball it. Sorry, I'm sorry. And then I use this red lentil pasta also from Trader Joe's. I feel like this would be, this recipe would probably be really good with regular pasta. But I'll be honest, I've never tried it. So let me know if you try it. So a whole bag. Of the so we're going to turn the stove on medium-ish. Just mix it all up. I'm also just going to add like a teensy bit of salt just to get um, it incorporated into the beginning of the pasta. But I will be adding more later along with pepper. I'm gonna cover this now for I don't know however long it takes to boil um, so I'm gonna cover it and let it boil okay we're heavy boiling so I'm gonna um, stir this up a little bit and then reduce the heat down a little bit and let it simmer for like 20 minutes You want to make sure you're stirring this after it comes to a boil every few minutes just so it's not sticking to the bottom um, and you're checking to make sure that the pasta isn't doing like the weirdest thing um, because if you've ever cooked with like a gluten-free pasta which I truly do not do often but red lentil pasta is gluten-free you know that the noodles can get kind of like mushy and weird so just keep your eye on it. I honestly like a lot of basil and I'm just ripping the obviously ripping the leaves up and just chucking them in. I don't know how it happens, but do you see how creamy this is? It's insane. And there she is.
I have officially become my bed. I really just want to prove that it doesn't have to be extremely expensive or overly complicated to be plant-based or to eat plant-based um, because it's really not. So that's all. I hope that that's what happened in this video. If not, I'm sorry about sorry about it not because that sucks. And I'm gonna go to bed now because we've become we've become one. Me in this bed. I'll see you all next time. Hugs and kisses. Jean loves ya. That was so weird.